Hi, we're here at Scala Days with Typeface Jason Sam. Thank you very much for joining us, Jason. You're welcome. And um, Jason, you work on the Scala team. You're basically helping to build Scala. Yeah, that's right. So Typesafe has a team of four or five of us working on Scala. Um, we're spread out across the world. I'm based in Australia. Um, we've got Adrian in San Francisco, Lucas in, in Zurich, Seth recently joined us in the East Coast of the States, and Rex Kerr uh, helps out a little bit as well. And um, what, what part of Scala, because I know there's a lot of that goes into it, which area is your speciality? Uh, I tend to spend most of my time working on the compiler itself, so that's fixing bugs that people um, come across and also working towards new features in the compiler that we're planning for the next release. Right, so when is that due, the big... Uh, Scala 2.12, um, it's been in progress for a little while now and we're hoping for release um, Q1 or Q2 next year. The big, uh, big theme of that release is going to be sort of supporting Java 8. Right, which is going to be kind of a big thing for developers in the JVM as well, isn't it? And kind of yeah, tapping yeah. into that Lambda functionality. Exactly. So after like many, many years of sort of stability and people standardised on, on Java 6, not a huge amount seem to adopt 7, but now 8 seems to be taking off. And um, it's great for us because we can, we can um, emit more efficient bytecode from the Scala language by targeting the, the new features that were added by for the Java language. Um, so, so concretely the things we plan to do there is um, use Invoke Dynamic as our representation of lambdas, which means you can get smaller output, smaller Java files, which when compiling your Scala code will make it easier for you to call the new functional style APIs in the Java standard libraries, for example, the Streams API. And uh, finally, it would make it easier for Java developers to call Scala APIs that, that take uh, functions so they'll finally be able to call you know, option.map or option.get or else, for example, uh, just by passing a Java Lambda. So how do you feel like Java Lambdas compared to Scala Lambdas? Because I know there's kind of been, last year a lot of people were saying, oh, Scala, like Java is going to kill Scala, and then kind of the response back is, well, like Scala Lambdas are just more sophisticated. Yeah, I think they're both... Um, so lambdas are just a small part of what makes Scala special. Um, it's great to see that Java's got them. It sort of validates, validates functional programming in many ways for such a mainstream language like Java to bring this feature. Um, so technically there are a few um, differences between them. So Scala lambdas um, are represented by a set of function types, so function 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Java lambdas um, can actually form any functional interface, for example, int int function or supplier or consumer. So that's, um, I think, a slightly more confusing aspect of Java lambdas, that, that there's not a canonical set of interfaces that they represent. Um, however, that flexibility has its benefits, so we're actually going to offer that. That's one of the intro uh, points that we'll offer. That that Scala functions can now implement these new Java interface, functional interfaces. And elsewhere in the Scala ecosystem, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. I know there's been some exciting talk about stacks at this conference. People kind of said lots of the ecosystem projects coming together and converging. Mm -hmm. What to you, what personally to you are you most excited about or have you enjoyed having playing with? Um, probably in the last uh, 12 months, I'd say, the work that was done by the Reactive Streams team, um, I think, is the most exciting. Um, in partly because it's 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 an interesting technical problem. It's solving something that's becoming a bigger and bigger problem for more teams, but also largely just the way that they managed to collaborate with um, I think about half a dozen different organisations to try to come up with a standard. And uh, if I understand correctly, that might even make its way into JDK nine. Um, yes, I've had that. Yeah, so that's that's really exciting, and now sort of we're starting to see um, talks where people are using this as a, as a, a building block and connecting um, the new databases like through Slick or drivers for Kafka, these sorts of things, um, databases and messaging, and it's just great to see like a new piece of glue to to build all these applications. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much for chatting with us today and good luck with the release next year. Alright, thanks a lot. <laughs>